I'm Lynn Liu. And I'm Liz DeBorkreiter. We're very excited to be here with you today. Throughout this presentation, you will get to watch short vignettes that depict different situations that you may encounter on college campus. After each vignette, we will provide you with information and post questions to help guide you through the presentation. We will also encourage you to reflect on and process your reactions to the scenes. You will also have an opportunity to discuss your reaction with others. So now, let's get started with the first scene. Hey, do you mind if I sit here? Oh, sure thing. Hey, aren't you in my chem class? Um, no. Are you sure? I mean, you play football, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're in my Chem 203 class. You sit in the back by the window. Um, no. I think you might have me confused with somebody else. Oh, okay. Well, he's black too. I could have sworn it was you. Oh, okay. After watching the first vignette, we'd like you to take some time to think about your reactions to what you just saw. What were some of your thoughts, feelings, or even judgments to that scene? You might even remember a time when you witnessed or were involved in a similar conversation. Some of you may have had really strong reaction to the scene, some may not be so. You may feel sad, angry, or even confused. Maybe you're uncomfortable. We want you to hold on to those reactions for just a moment. We're going to come back to them. For now, we want to share with you the main goal of this video. It is to create a medium through which difficult but important and powerful conversations around culturally sensitive topics can occur. We recognize that it can be difficult and uncomfortable to talk about these topics, but we believe that it's crucial to do so. So where do we start? That's a good question. A few moments ago, we asked you to think about your reactions to the scene. We want to come back to those now. In their model for engaging in courageous conversations around race, Curtis and Singleton provide a compass, four ways that people react to information or facts, emotionally, intellectually, morally, or socially. And it can be really helpful to understand your own perspective and what drives your reaction. An example of a moral reaction may be that woman was really wrong for mistaking her classmate for somebody else just based on his race. An example of an emotional reaction might be feelings of sadness based on seeing the hurt or frustration in the man's face. And a reaction driven by a sense of social responsibility could be maybe you want to do something about it, taking some action. And another response could be to intellectualize the exchange Perhaps something like, well, she didn't really mean anything by what she said. Can you identify your reaction as one of those four, or maybe a combination of them? We're going to turn back to the video and watch another scene. Pay attention to your reaction and keep in mind the four types of responses. Intellectual, emotional, social, and moral. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, I think we should go. Talk to you soon. Love you too. Bye. So how's the family? They're fine. We were just talking about Diwali. Oh, what's Diwali? It's the biggest Hindu festival, also known as Festival of Lights. I really want to celebrate it with my family. Oh, well, that shouldn't be an issue. Just tell your professor it's a religious holiday. I could, but it seems really weird to ask. What if I'm the only Hindu student asking to go home? And I don't want my professor to think I'm just buying more time to study. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, your professor probably doesn't even know what Diwali is, especially if it's on a Thursday. And I've heard that some of the makeup tests can actually be more difficult than the originals on purpose. Yeah, and it's not like I can afford to get a C in that class. Yeah. Again, take a few moments to reflect back on your reaction. Was it emotional, social, moral, or intellectual? Was your reaction similar to or different from your reaction while you watched the first scene? It's important to answer these questions for yourself because it can help you understand your perspective. And once you have the understanding of your perspective, it is easier to discuss with other people. Another important piece 
to the Courageous Conversations model are the four agreements that help to engage, sustain, and enhance meaningful dialogue. And they are stay engaged, speak your truth, experience discomfort, and expect and accept non-closure. People have a tendency to avoid talking about sensitive topics. By agreeing to stay engaged, you commit to remaining in the dialogue, regardless of discomfort or the behavior of others. By speaking your truth, you share your thoughts, feelings, and opinions honestly. That can be scary. But this model asks you to experience discomfort rather than run away from it. And let's face it, no one enjoys being uncomfortable, especially when discussion can cause you to examine your beliefs, values, perceptions, and behaviors. Issues of discrimination and prejudice have been around for a very long time. We have a natural tendency to search for solutions. However, there is no quick or easy fix. Before we watch the next scene, turn to the person next to you and share which of the agreements would be the easiest for you and which one would be the most difficult. Okay, we're going to turn to the next video. While you watch, please keep in mind the compass to help understand your reactions. It's okay, come on. You. I will be happy to show that in public. It's so unnecessary. I know. Seriously, there's a time and a place for that. No one wants to see it. Hey, ladies. Can I get in on that? You know, anytime you need some company, just give me a call. Have I told you? Excuse me? So when did you realize you were gay? We understand it can be difficult and uncomfortable to talk about culturally sensitive topics in an open and honest way. However, we think that by talking about sensitive topics, rather than avoiding them, we can bring about positive results. Discussion can lead to enhance relationship and improve understanding between individuals from different cultural groups. It can also prevent stereotyping, especially when you try to understand where the other person is coming from. And that's called perspective taking. Think back to the scenes that you just watched. Which perspective were you best able to identify with? Which character's perspective was most difficult to understand? We are going to watch another video that helped illustrate the concept of perspective taking. Hey, do you mind if I sit here? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hey, aren't you in my chem class? Uh, no. Are you sure? I mean, you, you play football, right? Yeah. Yeah, Chem 203, you sit by the window? No, you must be thinking of someone else. Oh, okay. Well, he's white too. I could have sworn it was you, though. That was an interesting scene. It sure puts a different spin on what we saw earlier. Hmm. We recognize that it can be difficult to truly take the perspective of someone else, especially when identity differences like race are apparent. How is your reaction to this scene similar to or different from your reaction to the earlier classroom scene? 
What are some of the things that stuck out at you while watching the scene from a different perspective? Let's take a few moments to reflect on your reaction before discussing it with others. This scene illustrates the perspective of racial identity. And although we show the perspective of two different racial identity groups, they are not exhaustive. And we hope that even if your race is not depicted, you may be able to relate on some level. Let's watch another scene. Okay. Talk to you soon. Love you too. Bye. So how's the family? They're fine. We're just talking about Easter. What's Easter? Easter is a Christian holiday where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'd really like to go home and be with my family that weekend, but I have a physics test on that Sunday. Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. Just tell your professor it's a religious holiday. I could, but it just seems weird to ask. What if I'm the only Christian student, like, asking to go home, and I don't want it to seem like I'm just trying to buy more time to study? I can see that. I mean, your professor probably doesn't even know that it's Easter, especially if it's on a Sunday. And I've heard that the makeup tests can actually be more difficult than the originals on purpose. Yeah, it's like I can actually like, afford to get a C in the class. This scene, like the last one, shows us a perspective that we don't see very often. There is a privilege that comes with identifying with a culturally dominant group like white, heterosexual, Christian. Let's turn to our last video and watch another example of shifting perspectives. Again, we encourage you to try to take on the character's perspective while watching the scene. You, why do they have to show that in public? It's so unnecessary. I know, like, seriously, there's a time and a place for that. No one wants to see it. Hey, can I get in on that? You know, anytime you need some company, just give me a call. I told you. Excuse me, but when did you know you were straight? We want to give you some time to discuss your reactions to the last few scenes and to the video as the whole. It is okay to feel frustrated or confused. Cultural perspective taking takes up time and practice. And so does engaging in courageous conversations. But doing so can help to decrease biases and stereotypes. First, understand your perspective and biases, then discuss your perspectives with others with an open mind. It is our hope that by watching this video, you can continue to engage in meaningful discussions in your everyday life.